Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. A dead body. Someone ended up killing themselves in the hotel room. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Actost. People ask Reddit. Hotel workers of Reddit. What is the worst thing you have found in a room after a guest stay? Number 1. Three guys in one room left all of their windows open and lights on overnight in the summer. I have never seen so many different types of bugs flying around the room, it was terrifying. We ran in spraying bug killer like our lives depended on it, then ran out and left the room for an hour. We were unable to walk to a floor that was almost black with dead bugs. I can still hear the crunching. Number 2. I was balancing month end one day when the front was swarmed with police cars. They raided a room with no notice to us at the front desk. Turns out a pimp was cooking meth in one of the rooms with two prostitutes and a dog. There was a short standoff before everyone was arrested. Their car was seemingly forgotten about in the parking lot, but it disappeared a week later. We were unable to charge for damages since all of their cards were stolen. Number 3. Commenter. I worked at a hotel a few years ago, front desk. I checked out a nice couple in the morning, they were very friendly, said they enjoyed their stay. Then housekeeping got to their room, the poor woman looked shell-shocked. I got to go through the room with a camera and my supervisor to document the state of the room. Two large, black, devil-headed dildos, lots of Ziploc baggies with powdery residue syringes, some used, some still with caps on them, including two in the toilet, and more travel-sized bottles of baby oil than I could count. We also found what appeared to be feces and blood smeared all over the bedding and walls and a small digital camera. Police were called, descriptions of them taken, and all their information they had used to check in. I quit soon after, so I don't know if they ever found them or press charges. Person B. It's always the seemingly nice ones. Number 4. It happened about a week after I started working night audit. This guy who was staying on our first floor, had decided to go outside to smoke in only a towel. His towel apparently became stuck in the door, and in a genius move, he grabbed the smoker's pole and busted out the window to his room. When he climbed in, he cut himself badly enough that he bled all over the room. The shower curtain, bedding and a couple of pillowcases had to be sent out to be professionally cleaned, and the rest of the room had to be professionally cleaned. The hotel charged him with the cost of the window, the cost of the cleanings, and for every night the room was out of order, which was about a month. During cleanup, one of our housemen got cut by the glass in the window, and had to get treated in case of blood-borne disease, and get stitches. The guest paid for all that too. The cost was around $10,000 for everything and he was banned from the property forever. He tried to come in again about a year later with a third-party reservation, and our GM personally waited for him and escorted him off the property. Number 5. This story is about a man who we called Huge James. Huge James is literally the fattest man I have ever seen. He's pretty tall, and easily at 4 to 500 pounds. In his room are his wife, his daughters, and himself. The women in the family were all normal size. This family quickly developed a bad reputation with our pizza chains that delivered, because they would order a lot of pizza and never tip the driver. The drivers would come down and complain to me or other front desk staff about this. It got to the point where the Domino's drivers would just give us the pizzas to take up to their room. Huge James and his family never let housekeeping in for about a week, and when they finally were allowed in, there was so much trash from fast food and pizza, that they had begun to stuff it under the beds. What is worse is that Huge James was physically too big to use the toilet in the room, we have rooms with reinforced toilets, so we absolutely could have accommodated him, so he had defecated in the tub. He then would use our nice white hotel towels to wipe himself, and just leave it on the floor. Nobody knew about the towels until our laundry lead, Miss Brenda, the sweetest and nicest little woman I know, found them herself. We had to throw the towels away, and we nearly lost Miss Brenda that day as well. While that was going on in the laundry room, one of our housekeepers was cleaning the room and noticed a towel tucked into the side of one of the beds. She pulled the towel out and a giant dildo came flying out with the towel. I saw the pictures of it, and end to end, it was almost as wide as the towel it was covered with. In addition to this, there were stains all over the mattress that had soaked through the sheets and onto the mattress. In the bathroom, the tub wasn't draining, and when they pulled the stopper mechanism out to try and clear the blockage, a lot of poop came with it and that's how we knew they were shoving the poop down the shower drain. During this time, they had been staying on a third-party reservation and making a new reservation every few days. 
When the new reservation popped up in our system after discovering what they had done to the room, the GM decided to evict them. Huge James came down and started screaming at the front desk supervisor about how the mess wasn't his fault and that it was retarded daughter doing all that and making the messes and defecating in the tub. Those were his exact words and how he talked about his daughter if that helps you understand what kind of a person he really was. Everyone had met his wife and daughters and they were really nice people. So we didn't believe him when he made claims that his daughter was the one making the messes. Huge James drove a lifted Hummer with huge chromed R rims, and the night before his eviction, I jotted down his license plate number in case he tried to pull something before he left, he did. When he found out that he was no longer allowed on the property, he trashed his room and smeared all the sauce packets from fast food and actual food on the walls, the TV, and the windows. They found food between the mattresses and the bed frames had been broken. When it was time for him to go, we had police there to escort them off the property. After they left, all the damage was found in the room, and because I had the license plate number, they were found and charged with vandalism, I think, and we took them to court for the damage to the room. It came out in court that it was actually him that was defecating in the tub, and he destroyed the room before they left. Number 6. Commenter. One of my favorite hotel stories, not a room, but the pool. It's late evening and a woman comes angrily into our lobby from the pool with three children and says, you guys need to do something about what's going on out there, and gestures to the pool area. I look at her inquisitively and she just says, go look, you see. I walk outside and it's pretty immediately clear the couple in the hot tub are discreetly having sex. I approach just enough to get their attention and say, hi guys, I know everyone's here to have a good time tonight, but we got a complaint about some hot and heavy activity in the hot tub. They're clearly intoxicated, but apologize and say it will stop. A few minutes later, the phone rings. It's the woman who complained before calling from her room which faces the pool. They're still at it. You need to do something. Children are staying in this hotel. I go back outside and sure enough, now that the spectators are gone, they're effing it out in the hot tub. I go back out, tell them to get out. They start giving me the story, it's their anniversary, they're very sorry, we won't have any more problems with them, etc etc I foolishly let them stay in the hot tub. 10 minutes later, phone rings. Seriously? Same lady. I look out the window, they're both totally naked. I'm sorry ma'am, I've warned them, I'm calling the police. Police arrive and head out to the pool. The officer handles it like a pro. He's very nice, lets them know that it's inappropriate, but he doesn't want to ruin what's clearly a fun weekend for them both, but they need to go to their room and not come out for the rest of the night. They are to stay in their room until tomorrow morning. No excuses. The couple thanks him for his understanding and promises they'll behave and stay in their room. The officer and I wind up chatting and laughing about it all and he asked if he can grab a cup of coffee in our lobby while he fills out his report. Of course he can. He's sitting in the lobby, I'm back to work, and I hear him say, oh, you've got to be effing kidding me. I'm shocked at the broken quietness as I see him jump up and exit the lobby. Right to the hot tub where the same couple is back in the hot tub making out. I can only assume they took the stairs at the end of the hall out to the parking lot and around to the pool. Arrested them both. They came back Monday afternoon, they were arrested on Friday night, to collect their property. Person B. They came back Monday, to have sex in the hot tub. Number 7. Commenter. First, you gotta understand that a lot needs to happen for this to occur. Our lowest floor was still about a meter and a half from the ground, and each outside room had a balcony rail. However, a guest had decided to want to unload his motorcycle from his truck and leave the ramp down, so, I'm assuming, he could ride the bike up when he was done. The guest that was staying in the room had room service, decided to leave the food uncovered and the balcony doors open, and later went to the hotel pool slash spa to relax. Upon returning, they had gone to us at reception and said that there was a bear in the room. Puzzled, we quietly approached the room and slowly opened the door. Lo and behold, there was a bear eating room service and making a mess of my afternoon. The bear used the ramp to get into a room at the property. We called Parks Canada to deal with it. Guest was not charged a cleaning fee. Person B. Smarter than the average bear. Number 8. Commenter. It was a family retreat slash kids birthday party. The adults were getting shit-faced while the kids were in the presidential suite raising hell. They had decided to have a fully stocked ice cream bar and allowed the kids to do what they wanted with it. M and M's crushed into the carpet, chocolate footprints on the walls, whipped cream effing everywhere. Fruit punch spilled on the bed. 
In total we had to charge them about $7,000 in damages, which they took to court, because they thought the cleanup would be included, that's why we did it at a hotel. They also smashed glass all over our dog hiking trail, which I had to clean up. Person B, cleanup included. What a deal! Number 9, I worked security for a while at a really large hotel. Two stand out in my mind. The first, a guest that went out by ambulance because of some allergic reaction, what the guest claimed at least. The room was full of black and bloody diarrhea. The smell was horrible, I have never smelled shit like that and hope to never again gag. The second wasn't something left but an assistance call. Elderly man was unresponsive when we got there. We used a defibrillator on him till the ambulance arrived and he actually survived. He came back to the hotel some months later to thank us, it was great. Most of those calls didn't end well so having one who survived and came back to say hey was nice. Number 10, a dead body. Someone ended up killing themselves in the hotel room by hanging themselves in the closet. The body was in there a few days before we found him. Number 11, a syringe under a mattress, after I felt a prick on the end of my finger. I was tucking in a sheet under the bed, and there were actually two uncovered insulin needles under there. I got rushed to hospital, hepatitis shots and a tetanus shot, two different HIV prevention medications for a month, monthly blood tests for about a year. I'm fine, and it barely stuck me in truth, but I was already afraid of needles and disease. I still feel traumatized. I was not going to post at all, but I've always wondered if there was anything else I should have done. The doctors assured me that there were more precautions than necessary. Number 12, old couple checked out and left a huge box of sex toys. Not that bad, right? We keep items for 90 days, the hotel gets first dibs after that, say it's an iPad that would be good for something, then whoever found it gets second dibs, then GM, then it's whoever wants it. Head housekeeper kept them locked in her desk because she wanted first dibs and was scared someone else would take them. Number 13, I had an elderly couple check in one afternoon. A couple hours go by and the husband comes up saying the wife is sick and they need to leave immediately. Given the circumstances, we figured it would be a quick clean so we refunded the money and down the room for the night. The next morning we told one of our maids to hit it first since we knew it was empty. The maid came back refusing to clean the room because there was shit all over the bathroom. I didn't really believe her because she tended to be lazy. So I decided to check it out myself. She wasn't lying. There was shit everywhere. I don't know how, but there was shit on the toilet seat, on the tank, under the vanity and on the wall under the vanity, on the floor next to the toilet, on the wall behind the toilet, and on the side of the bathtub. This lady must have blown out her asshole while falling over to shit how and where she shit. The smell was horrendous. I ended up having to clean it. I went through three bottles of our strongest cleaner plus an entire garbage bag of cleaning rags which were immediately trashed. We had to down the room another five nights with the use of five bottles of air freshener and open windows. I'll never forget that. I went in wearing rubber gloves and a mask. The motel had one of those small masks for smoke, but I had to use three bandanas and leave the room every few minutes. We did not charge the elderly couple for the mess. It was a small motel on the coast, oceanfront, and our bosses were high on keeping a good reputation to keep the repeat customers. Some of you have suggested C. diff or a colostomy bag. I think it could have been either of those. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.